first hour. And uh, that was amazing. Okay, so gang stalking. Um, well, there's no sort- shortage of that topic uh, spoken here. Uh, that is something I will not um, uh, shut up about because, you know, it's you, you, look, there's so many targeted individuals that tune in here and tune in elsewhere, you know, to other shows too, to try to just find out what happened to them and, you know, why they were targeted. In my, in my case, I, I, I've, when this would happen uh, time and time again, um, you know, you, you didn't even, you weren't even aware of it at first. And then when you, when you're made to be aware of the surveillance and uh, people taking pictures and putting microphones in your house and, uh, or disturbing your house a little bit to kind of freak you out, it's all, it's all a satanic plot, really. It's just, uh, but I wanted to get uh, Dr. John Hall in here uh, today because of the events. Obviously, we haven't spoken to him in a long time, and I, I kept meaning to get back to him uh, again for a follow-up, but uh, this is a good time because now you're seeing the ramp, you're seeing gang stalking going mainstream. No longer are people going to be, you know, locked up uh, in the nut house for talking about it because <laughs> it's it's been legitimized, especially this last week. So let me uh, see if uh, I bring in our guest. Uh, Dr. John Hall, are you there? Yes, I am, Zeph. It's been a long time. It's good to hear from you again. Yeah, the time flies. I, you know, because I keep meaning to, to to get back to people. And, you know, it's just, and then it's two years. You know, it's it's amazing. Has it been that long? I, I, I know it's been at least a year, a year. Uh, that we talked about this topic last. And, uh, I mean, you're certainly one of the biggest proponents of exposing this that, uh, that I know. Because, um, you know, because I've been through it. And I just, you know what? I actually just went through it again recently. And I, I'm not going to say anything about it right now because I want to find out, you know, what, what I want to get an update from you right away. Um, you know, you, you wrote this book where you were uh, kind of ostracized and criticized and, you know, your job was in jeopardy. A lot of you had a lot of backlash and I uh, saw a lot of, you know, mean people trying to write stuff. They ne- proving they never read the book, just giving you like one star on Amazon, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it se- seemed like they were stalkers. Well, so now how, you know, so so since the writing of the book, what what's been happening? Uh, well, I mean, you remember the the book is called A New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America, right. and it goes through not only the gang stalking aspect of this, but electronic harassment, which goes hand in hand. Um, a lot of changes in the last, uh, especially in the last year, uh, you're right, it has slightly started to become more mainstream. There are some uh, mainstream media sources starting to pick up these problems. And there's some people, um, you know, some, some stars and celebrities starting to come forward uh, with these complaints, which is actually... Uh, done it a little bit of good. Of course, you know, there's still the general public consensus that it's all mental illness. And even with the celebrities voicing this complaint, it, it goes yep. along with it. But that's how it's designed to work. It's designed to, to make one look mentally ill. But that you're talking about the Quaids. Yeah. You're talking about Randy Quaid, and he came forth with an stunning admission of all this. Just unbelievable. Yeah, and and yeah, and, uh, yeah, and Randy Quaid is, you know, is typical of a victim. I mean, he's had some some problems in the past you know he hasn't exactly been an angel in the celebrity circles right. and and that is the, exactly the type of people that they they like to victimize because it's your past history that further victimizes you and and lends to discreditation right. uh, and they certainly done that with him so in other words finding someone that's already weak in terms of the public uh perception so that when they complain uh, they won't be able to um get anywhere well, that's exactly right, Zev. And, and if you look back at, you know, the early the early research into mind control and um, was MK Ultra, mm-hmm. and almost all the victims were what we term social outliers. You know, they were, you know, men who were using prostitutes. They were people that were involved in the drug counterculture. They were they were people that already had a lifestyle that was somewhat discrediting to them. So when they did get victim not victimized, no one would listen because they'd say, well, you know, you used to do this, you were involved in this, and there was always an excuse for, for why it was happening, and usually that excuse went back to drugs or mental illness. Yeah, most uh, uh, creative people, artists in, in, in Hollywood and elsewhere, but most creative people, whether you're successful or not, have tended to, to mess around with drugs and, you know, just, just excesses it at times, and maybe it's because of their creativity, that could be it, but what Whatever it is, it can be used then against them later, and uh, you can never live it down. I mean, if you've done time in a rehab, for example, you know, uh, you're, you're, that record follows you. 
And even though, well, it's, and even and, and even more than that, you know, the, I don't know if you've noticed, there's commercials out right now that have uh, Glenn Close and several other stars that are standing next to people that have had, you know, mental health diagnoses, uh, wearing T-shirts where, you know, one it'll say one T-shirt will say support system and the other one will say bipolar disease, and they're trying to mainstream this attitude that it's okay to be mentally ill, that you know these are people and they have a problem and it and, and it can be corrected or be dealt with. But that's just far from the truth in real society. In real society, once you're diagnosed with any type of mental illness, you're looked at differently. You're looked at differently in society. You're looked at differently in your job. And usually the downhill slide starts after a false diagnosis. <laughs> well, yeah, and and that's why I had one of our friends, one of our listeners, um, who happens to be a, a doctor, uh, he wrote up that I was sane um, and that I was uh, of sound mind and body. And he you know, wrote it in an official document and signed it. He said, you might need that. <laughs> you know, just well, in yeah, case. And, they you know, and, and the, the, the sad part is the psychiatric community at the community level probably largely is ignorant of the technology and, the, and how the stalking works. But at the top of the food chain in the American Psychiatric Association and Canadian Psychiatric Association, you know, these psychiatrists, you know, especially early on, were the ones behind the research. You and Cameron, Sidney Gottlieb, Jolly and West. Yeah, Jolly you know, and West. The, the, those the organizations, they know very well this is going on. They were the proponents of it initially. And that is the, really the, the disgusting thing about that field of medicine is when a large group of people start displaying symptoms that don't fit into the criteria for mental illness, they change the DSM-4 to, to fit them in. Right. I mean, if you don't have your, uh, your mental illness, we'll, we'll, we'll find a new category for you. But isn't this, again, like the rise of psychiatrists like they had in the Soviet Union? I mean, isn't, doesn't it go hand in hand with communism and socialism? That, that... Oh, sure it does. Sure it, sure it does. And, and in this country, especially in the DOD, um, the psych psychiatric professionals have been used as a weapon for some time. If you had an officer that disagreed with DOD policy or, you know, or a, you know, a ranking officer that you know, had different thoughts on something that, that went in contrary to his upper brass, one of the first things they do is pull that person in for a psychiatric eval. They, you know, they call them a pedophile or a drug addict mm -hmm. or give them a mental illness, and and that way it allows them to marginalize that person's views. Well, they were, yeah, and I've, yeah, well, so now that this last week has passed, and uh, and, and now that you, you know the the rhetoric, the fervor, the, the the intensity, the 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 heat of this nation is at the boiling point. What do you think uh, going forward? What, what's going to happen what, with regard to gang stalking? I mean, it, it's now they've been given legitimacy to go ahead and do it more. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's, that's one of the troubling things. But the, at least the good thing is we've uh, Fox News and some other mainstream media sources are finally starting to take a look at this. I did an interview with really? okay. uh, Fox, Fox News out of Sacramento yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, there's a individual, and I'll, I'll go ahead and mention his name. He's he's actually got some stuff out on the web. His name's Jesse Beltron, and uh, I, I won't say his his particular uh, case, but he was witness to something um, that was kind of bad, and immediately started being gang stalked and electronically harassed afterwards. A very credible individual. What's his last uh, name? His last name, sir. The... Bel Bel Beltran. Okay. B e l t r a n. And uh, he, uh, you know, got in contact with me, and, and a very credible, educated person uh, has lawyers um, behind him. He was found to be chipped. Um, went to a dentist office for some basic uh, dental work, and woke up four hours later covered in blood and sweat, and uh, was chipped on either side of the TMJ joints in the jaw. And uh, has been frequency scanned, has been imaged, has found to be chipped, has physicians that are working with him. Uh, on extraction, and and actually has Fox News um, doing a piece on his story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see here where that he had an RFID chip in him. Is that right? That's right. And uh, okay, so uh, I would think that this a lot of that is is a you know kind of a pretext to chipping everyone. You know, and that's the bill. Well, and, and, and now that's one of the things we think. But you know, most victims were not finding chips in and. Um, if you read um, Dr. Robert Duncan, uh, is a former uh, DARPA 
a government researcher who did a lot of work in CIA programs who has also come out against this technology, just released a book called Soul Catcher, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. And he goes into detail on how brain entrainment can be done to cause just about any symptom, including voices in the head. And um, his take on it, and, you know, and my take somewhat as well, is that the chipping is older technology, that most of this can be done now through um, remote neural monitoring, um, brainwave sensing, that where there really is no, no chip required. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, this idea that, you know, perhaps uh, that whole biblical thing of, a, of some, you know, something under the skin, under the forehead or the, or the hand, um, you know, do you think they'll do it just to fulfill the biblical prophecy, or is it no longer necessary? Uh, well, it, it's not necessary to harass someone. Now, to fulfill biblical prophecy, certainly you would need a chip for data storage, you know, to buy or sell. And mm -hmm. and there have been, you know, Verichip's been a strong proponent of that. And, uh, um, you know, and they say that their chips are mainly for storage and not for tracking. I mean, most of us think that's mostly BS. But, right. uh, you know, the, that part of the prophecy certainly is true. And if you look at our, the, the current health bill, unless we get it repealed, mm -hmm. there is a provision in the, in the Obama health care bill for chipping to have your medical data in a chip in your forearm. So there it is, the beginning of that kind of thing where eventually nobody could buy or sell with it. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how it's going. I mean, it's supernatural and natural at the same time. It just seems to be going at such a quick pace that one almost gets this idea that we are really living in that last period of time. I cannot imagine this going, you know, the end game here, going further than we are now, I guess, would become sort of a lockup type tyranny. Uh, everybody tattling on everybody else, people being put in internment camps, the neighborhoods being uh, patrolled by military vehicles and that sort of thing. I mean, that's the next step if we if we don't do something about it. Well, and you know, Zeph, and my kind of take on it is, and, uh, you, know, and you know, you know, I have a Christian background, and right. um, that's what that's you, why I mentioned all that stuff because I didn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't have done that if you weren't. But I mean, since I, yeah. I know you believe, also. Well, and if you if you, the way I kind of look at things, I look at things that from an aspect, if you know, if I were God, and I had you know something I created that was starting to get so advanced in their technology that they're approaching my ability as their God. Well, you know, in my take, it would be time for that creation to go, and uh, and and we're at that point now where <laughs> he we, said you know, very he, he said very dispassionately. By the way, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. okay. Time for and, this. Know, and, yeah. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. No, I thought if it's time for a break, I was just I was just gonna you know, just gonna say we now have the ability to read each other's thoughts, the government to hear your thoughts in real time, and actually control the mind. And to me, that's that is one of the one of the signs of the end of days. I would imagine. Yeah, because there's see that because there's no further one it can go. It it and, and it's so scary and interesting and weird and kind of exciting in a sense that it's jibing in with this you know kind of Mayan thing of 2012. I'm not. I don't put a lot of stock into that, but it is interesting how it's all dovetailing together. And so quickly, also, that, that kind of, in a way, gives me hope that we're going to hurtle on into the, uh, that, that this is really going to be the end of days, like described in the book of Revelation, because then I know I'm going to see my Lord, you know. I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, gosh, you know, it's, there's a huge fight that, that uh, against that kind of thought, you know. There's a lot of, you know, like History Channel, Discovery Channel, all these channels putting all this billions of dollars into their productions to get us to, or millions in any way, to get us to, to um, have doubt in the biblical narrative, in the biblical story. Well, that's true, Zeph. Christianity is, uh, is being um, hit from every side currently. And if you, uh, even in this country by our own government, but if you look at other countries violently, you know, uh, you know, Turkey and a lot of the Arab countries have actually started bombing a lot of the Christian churches and Catholic churches. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, a, it's getting to be a scary time to be a, a Christian, that's for sure. Time to stand up. Well, okay, so in the book, you describe some of the most horrific. Uh, um, some of the most, you know, just you, you go through a 